Hey, it's Gabby again from Print Design Academy, where we teach graphic designers how to be experts in print and packaging design. Now this is video two in our Print Ready File series. So if you haven't watched video one, stop, head over there and do that. And if you have, welcome to step two, cleaning up your swatches and layers for print in InDesign and Illustrator. Let's head into it. So day two, we're talking swatches and layers super important part of this print ready process. Um, the swatches and layers really indicate to your printer what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you can kind of call stuff out using them. And then the other side is you want to make sure your printed project looks the way that you want it to. And by doing your pro uh, setting up your swatches correctly in the right color spaces, all that good stuff, uh, you get your desired outcome. Now, with the swatches, we have provided some of the brand colors in the brief. So there's a few uh, CMYK and Pantone swatches there for you to use. If you want to do your own thing, that's totally cool. All we ask is that you have at least one Pantone in your design. Um, yeah, so go ahead to the brief, grab those colors if you're interested. Now, the other thing is Pantone Connect. Because we are working with Pantones, the best way forward is to use the Pantone Connect extension in um, Illustrator and InDesign. So Adobe and Pantone have kind of been working through some stuff. And um, so Pantone is sort of taking on their own product and you are no longer really access uh, able to access the Pantone color books within Adobe. So the next future direction is Pantone Connect. And what a better way to experiment and play with that than during this challenge. And not only that, you get to play with it. We have done, um, we've been able to get a 30 day free trial for you guys. So it used to be, or it is a seven day trial naturally, but down in the description of this, um, this post, you'll be able to find the 30 day coupon code. So yeah, it's going to be good. Um, I'm going to walk you through how to use it. If you want to take the time now, grab that brief, grab that Pantone connect and set it all up. And then, yeah, let's talk so uh, swatches and layers. All right, so here we are with InDesign and we're going to start it off with layers. Layers can be a bit of a personal preference in terms of, you know, how you want to separate your stuff. I would recommend at least these two layers. Uh, so the first one being creating a background layer. That means that uh, you can kind of keep your full bleed images, all of that stuff at the very back. Um, and if you're putting type on top of it, it just keeps it out of the way um, when you're, yeah, when you're trying to move stuff around, having that background layer really keeps it a little clean and easier to work with. And then the other one would be just artwork. Um, you can choose to do images and type on a different layer, um, but I'm just gonna do all my artwork, oh, art, work, all my artwork on this one layer here. Uh, when we get into the further things like exporting, uh, you'll notice a few things with being able to kind of split your type onto a few different layers and such, but that'll make more sense when we get to the export section. Now, the other important layer is, um, and, and how layers can really indicate to your printers what you're trying to accomplish, is by adding a new layer for any specialty finishing um, things that you have in your file. So specialty finishing being embossing, uh, spot gloss, if you're doing a die line or just like rounded corners, you would want to create a new layer for all of those things. So that would be, like I said, spot gloss. I like to keep all of my random stuff like this or my call outs in like all caps, just because it keeps it clear for me, as well as choose a bright, vibrant color. So that's a really nice one. Go ahead and click that. Let's say I wanted to put my fold or indicate where my fold line was going to be. I could draw a line and then create fold. And again, with another little bright color. Let's go like that. So you can start building that however many finishings or different things you need to call out, you would build those layers up. Um, yeah. So, but right now we're not dealing with those. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Artwork backup, uh, sorry, artwork background. Those are some good basics to get started. Okay. So now we're going to move on to swatches. Swatches in InDesign, um, are, yeah, they're a little bit more, they're pretty functional. I would say, um, one of the things is like everything in InDesign that you're creating, it really does favor CMYK. But if you are bringing in other aspects of your artwork, you'll start to notice that your swatches could show up with RGB or these other color spaces. Um, 
In Illustrator, you'll see in Illustrator, it kind of auto converts it, which I'm not a huge fan of, um, where, because like in InDesign, you can actually have control over what you're gonna change your swatch to. Uh, you don't wanna get stuck with an RGB that's kind of been forced into CMYK and you're like, oh heck, that's a weird color, right? So anyway, so if I had an RGB color here, um, and let's say it was this art, you know, so you had an RGB color come in and it was like when you exported or you pasted some artwork in here, you can see right away that you have the RGB icon here versus the CMYK, which is that, you know, different color little square there. So if I wanted to change that over, I would go CMYK and I would make sure it was processed and hit OK. So now that's into CMYK. Um, yeah, you, didn't know, you don't want to print anything in RGB. It, uh, it you can't. Um, the printers are then on their end are going to convert it for you. And like the sort of same issue with Illustrator, you really want to control how your colors look out in the end. So having that um, control on this end, changing the colors into the right swatches and color spaces as you need is the best practice for doing so. So I'm going to work with our brand colors that are listed in the, the brief that we provided for you guys. Um, so I mean, we made it really easy. We have the cyan 100%, magenta 100%, and yellow, and InDesign already has them laid out because, again, print favorite, all of that good stuff. There are a few other random ones. Um, you don't ever really want to have extra swatches in your files. Um, when the printer opens up the file, they can just see what swatches you're using, how many colors, all of that good stuff. So by deleting unnecessary colors and swatches, um, yeah, it just creates a cleaner finished product. A quick way, I mean, we don't have any artwork or any shapes on here yet. So, I mean, I'll just show you for indication. If I had this little shape here, uh, a quick way, like along the process you're designing, um, you can go ahead and click select, or sorry, the hamburger menu and select all unused. So you can see the cyan didn't get selected because it was a part of the artwork. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, as you go on, you would you could sl keep sl selecting that and keep, keep deleting ones as necessary. But at this level, I'm just gonna set this up clean. So I wanna make sure that I have all of these unnecessary colors out of the way here. Go ahead and delete that as well, just to get it out. So cyan, magenta, yellow, those are the first three of our brand colors that we were using. And then the next are gonna be Pantones. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how to get into that Pantone Connect. So Pantone Connect, um, you would have, you know, kind of attached the, well, signed up, and then um, you can attach the window to your sidebar here if you're looking to find out where the Pantone Connect extension goes to. So you need to go into the Adobe Exchange app situation and get Pantone Connect, and then it will be available in Window and Extensions. So uh, it's Extensions here, and it'll also be called Window Extensions in Illustrator. So Pantone Connect, I have that here. And uh, yeah, the Pantone, um, you can have your saved palettes here. You can create your new palettes. Um, if you were looking for a specific Pantone, I mean, you know, let's try this um, like yellow or something like that. You could find all of their options for yellow in all of their different color guides, etc. cetera. Um, or you can just kind of click colors and just pick one and sort of scroll through. Um, you're gonna probably want, you know, keep a, either coded or uncoded. With, with this being a direct mail, I'm gonna be using coded colors, um, meaning that just means that it's gonna go on a coded paper. So coded paper is a bit more uh, less susceptible to things than like uncoded, but it's just personal preference. Either way, make sure that you are choosing the right color guide for the type of paper that you're envisioning. It does make a difference, promise. So yeah, this would be a way where you can scroll through, kind of get a sense. Um, you know, if you don't have color books in front of you, the physical book, I would refrain from just kind of going too much of like, oh, this color, because it really does make a difference between on screen and in hand. Um, but yeah, so the colors that we are using, all of this is um, listed in the brief and I have them sort of pre-saved here in this palette that I created for myself. And you can do so by creating new. 
um, with these Pantone colors. The only way to bring those swatches into the Adobe Swatch um, would be, you'd have to have the premium. Um, so that's that 30 day trial that we're giving you guys. Um, that'll give you the access to this add swatch button. I'll show you how to add the swatches later if you don't, um, you know, if you're not choosing to go this route and, or if you just needed to know in the future. So for this, I'm hitting add to swatch on the green, add to swatch on the orange, and this purple color of ours is also an add to swatch. Okay, so those are the Pantones there all listed. You can see that they're spot colors and they're lab, so L-A-B, um, where our process is the CMYK and it has a sort of gradient sort of process thing. Um, and like we click it, you can just sort of see spot, lab, awesome. Now, if you were doing, um, if you needed to manually put them and you didn't have the connect and all of that stuff, you can create a Pantone. Oop, hang on, let's click. Oop. Okay, so um, if you wanted to kind of manually add some of the lab colors from the Pantone, uh, Pantone Connect doesn't provide, you won't be able to see the actual breakdown of the colors without having the premium. So you would need to just ask your printer if they have color books or we've provided the lab specs breakdown for you. But if you were doing it, so let's say it was a Pantone, um, you know, a Pantone and the number for it, one, two, three. Uh, it's also helpful to put C on there if it is coded. Then you would go from process to spot. Spot is super important. Um, it takes it out and it'll make sense in the export, but it takes it out of being jumbled in with um, the other kind of colors and such. And then we're gonna go to lab. So lab is how the Pantones are created. So this is where you'd be able to kind of put in, let's say like, you know, I'm just using random numbers now, so don't, don't, don't come at me, but <laughs> so let's say this was my Pantone and all the correct lab numbers situated. I would then hit okay. And I have uh, sort of an identical Pantone created. And that would also be an acceptable one as long as it was in lab and spot. Um, yeah, so whichever way you choose, I mean, the Pantone Connect is really handy being able to go to add swatch and there are a bunch of other features in there. Um, highly recommend playing around with that, but that would be, all of our swatches set up there um, with our CMYK and Pantone colors in InDesign. Hey there, you're clearly interested in learning more about print design. An important part of that is exporting your file for print. It's easy to miss little things along the way, so that's why we created the Print Ready Files Checklist. And you can get that for free at the link in the description of this video. This easy to follow step-by-step -step checklist will help you make sure your files are print ready before you send them to the printer. Graphic designers of all levels will find this to be a valuable tool and it's free. So go check it out at the link in the description and back to the video. All right, so we just did InDesign. We're into Illustrator now. There are so many similarities, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on some of it here, but I will make sure to call out all of the weird quirky things that Illustrator does with swatches and colors. But if you want a refresher on anything, go ahead and scroll back. And yeah, so to start off is the layers. Layers, super straightforward, the same window paneling, so nothing different to InDesign. We're gonna do background, and we're gonna do that artwork layer. So if you have any other specialty finishing, all of that's good stuff, make sure it has its own separate layer. So yeah, but nothing different here. Artwork, background, good to go on layers. Now the next thing is swatches. Swatches in Illustrator are a little crazy. Um, they like to give you every single color in the world that you don't need, as well as a bunch of fun patterns like this one called Bugaboo. Like, don't need that. Thank you, Illustrator, for trying, but no thank you. So without even trying to deal with any of this, I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, the hamburger menu and we're gonna do select all unused colors. Um, before I hit the delete button on here, I just wanna highlight. So Illustrator is RGB favorited. Um, even at the very beginning when you went through and you were like, yeah, Illustrator, I'm gonna change that to CMYK, right? it still creates the document in RGB and then force changes it into CMYK. Even though it appears like, oh great, I set my file up in CMYK, it kind of didn't. Um, you can see how it's RGB red, but with like the little CMYK 
indicator there. I'm gonna show you something crazy with this black in a minute too. But anyway, we select it all unused, get out of here, no thank you. Even at this level, the very first thing you have to do if you're working with print in Illustrator, you need to change your black. Do you see this? So an actual CMYK black is 100% K and none of this other stuff. This would be way too much ink for your printers. What it's doing here is creating an RGB black and forcing it into CMYK. CMYK. So once you're doing this, always zero, zero, and 100% to get that black back on track. There we go. So now this is clean. I can work with this. I'm gonna start manually adding my colors back in. Um, that's the other reason why I love InDesign is because it doesn't kind of mess around with it. Uh, so with Illustrator, you definitely wanna start fresh and add your colors in manually. So our colors are that 100% cyan, that magenta, and that yellow that we're using for the brand. Again, if you wanna do something else, feel free to do it. So cyan, 100%. Zero, zero, zero. So that's our cyan there. We're going to get that magenta. Zero, one hundred, zero, zero, zero. Beautiful. And the yellow. Zero and one hundred. Um, a nice thing too, if you want to hit global, global is really great because if you change this swatch in this swatch panel by dragging it or whatever it is, it's going to globally change it throughout your artwork. So it just makes the cleanup process a lot easier in uh, keeping your swatches all to one watch or whatever, right? Okay, cyan, magenta, yellow, beautiful. Now the other swatches we're using are the uh, the Pantone swatches. So I've got it loaded up here. So we're gonna go into our Pantone Connect. And because I saved those palette, that palette from that other thing, I can kind of access it really quickly, which is great. So I highly, re highly recommend doing a create new palette. So I'm gonna click here, same thing. If you have the premium, you can do add to swatch. Getting my red, add to swatch, and add to swatch. So there we go. We can see that we have our cyan, magenta, yellow, the CMYKs because of that little indicator. They are processed because it's the gradient, right? Um, with the spot colors on lab, I've got my lab, my spot color. There's these little labby colors, a little spot. Perfect. Again, if you are wanting to do a more manual approach to adding these Pantones, um, you can do a new swatch. And uh, then let's say it was, you know, the, whoa, okay. Let's say it was something else, et cetera, et cetera. You would go in here and let's do like, you know, our one, two, three, one, two, three. C for coded, again, keeps it clean and easy to know what the printers, or so the printers know what you're doing. And then I would do lab and type those numbers in, get it all good, make sure it matches up. It's pretty exact science over there. So good to do that and hit okay. And that again is a lab and a spot. So as long as it's lab and spot, it's Pantone friendly and printer friendly. So I'm gonna delete that though, cause I don't need it. So that is the illustrator section of swatches and layers. Um, again, kind of keep an eye out. It says it's CMYK, but illustrator likes to be a little funky with that. But yeah, that's that there. So that's it. Your layers and swatches should all be spick and span. Now the third step to print ready files, we're dabbling in Photoshop, all about working with photos and getting them ready for print. We cover that in video three of this series and you can watch that right here.